Yeah, so this is uh, uh, lecture number 27. We are going to talk on, uh, I mean, continue talking on uh, this aquifer properties. So, so uh, before going to that, there is an example on uh, how to find out the uh, average hydraulic conductivity. So, here in this example, uh, in a soil stratum, the hydraulic conductivity uh, of at the surface is 2 into 10 power minus 3, this is at surface and if uh, it uniformly reduced to 4 into 10 power minus 4, from here to here it, is, it gets reduced right. So, and then at a depth 22 meter okay, and as shown in figure, if the water table is 3 meter below the surface, so if there is a water table which is 3 meter below the surface determine the average hydraulic conductivity of the stratum. So, what is the average hydraulic conductivity of this stratum? Okay. So, in this uh, let us formulate an equation. So, uh, we have to find out what is the linear because this is the decreasing from 2 to uh, 2 into 10 power minus 3 to 4 into 10 power minus 4 and how linearly it is decreasing we are going to get an equation. I am using that equation and uh, you will be uh, integrating that equation with the, uh, the uh, and the distance, uh, right? So then you get the the average um, uh, hydraulic conductivity. So let's see that. So here in the next uh, uh, slide, if we go. Okay, so the before that, let's see. Okay, here for linear variation, the hydraulic conductivity at a height the bottom as a datum. So, we, we take this as a datum now, okay, this is the datum. It can be expressed as, so we are going to express that as, um, so let us see. So, here k hydraulic conductivity which is equal to 4 into 10 power minus 4 because you, our datum is bottom, right, our datum is bottom top. So, here you got 2 into 10 power minus 3 and the bottom it is 4 into 10 power minus 3. Okay. So, from the datum, so we take 4 into 10 power minus 3 plus the difference, so 2 into 10 power minus 3 minus 4 into 10 power minus 4 divided by the total length is 22 meter right, into x. So, from 0 to x you are going up, okay. that is x. So, finally, you get k in terms of the distance, right? So, this kind of regression equation. So, knowing the distance from here to here, you can estimate k value. Okay? So, then hydraulic conductivity continuous function of depth say this in this and now average k which is equal to 1 by b 0 to b k into d x. Okay? So, here 1 by b so that means 0 to b let us say this is 0 to b. So, here we know this is 3 meter and this is 22 meter right and from here to here this will be 19 meter right. So, from 19 meter 0 to 19, so we need to find out k for this uh, you know stratum. So, 1 by 19 and 0 to 19 and put this equation here right and integrate it you get k bar is 0 0.942. So, and then, then look at the validity of the Darcy's law. So, Darcy's law is valid when head loss is directly proportional to the velocity of flow. Okay. And the Darcy's law valid for laminar flows. Laminar flow you are talking R e should be less than 1. Okay. So, strictly if it is less than 1, it is a laminar flow and we know we already know how to estimate R, R, R e rho V d by mu. Okay. An example. So next example here to check the validity of uh, Darcy law. If the density of water, viscosity, pipe diameter, and velocity is given, so put everything in this equation. Right, uh, R in rho v. So rho v l. L is here is the diameter. Let's put it d rho v d by mu, and this will be 0 0.125. So R is 0 0.125, which is less than one. So, that means this is a valid, okay. Darcy's law is valid for this. And 
The next is the transmissivity. So, the transmissivity is defined as the rate at which water is transmitted through its unit width under a unit hydraulic gradient. So, the previously what we thought unit uh, you know cross sectional area right is passing through unit trans, uh, cross sectional area. So, if this if that one is passing through uh, a thickness of aquifer okay, thickness of aquifer. Okay. So, <coughs> not only unit, so if you are considering the whole uh, depth right a uh, thickness and then the k multiplied by b. So, that will give the transmissivity t. Okay. So, if the hydraulic conductivity k for this uh, geological formation which has a thickness of b. So, the k multiplied by b equal to t. So, that is the t is a transmissivity. So, for this particular aquifer how much water it, it can transmit right uh, from the particular thickness of the aquifer. Okay. So, uh, the coefficient of transmissivity or transmissibility this is also called uh, transmissibility okay. and it characterizes the ability of aquifer to transmit the water. So, the here t equal to k into b. Suppose, if you have uh, the water is flowing in x direction, they are different layers. So, each layer got a different k values and uh, thicknesses. The total is b is a thickness. So, the k x, the k x, the entire k, they mean average k x, average k can be estimated by, uh, by uh, knowing the k value individ individually, right. So, that k m into b m divided by b total b. So, this is uh, called the uh, uh, this is called the average okay. and another average is uh, called you can say the distance average. So, the b divided by is called inverse distance. So, b divided by b by k m right individual b by k m. So, this is also you get the average k value. And the other one is specific retention. So, the specific retention of an aquifer is defined as the ratio of volume of water that the soil after being saturated will retain against the force of gravity its own volume. Okay. So, let us say this is the volume of uh, soil, okay, a saturated soil, this is a saturated soil, its volume is V, right. It is the volume of water that soil after saturation will retain okay, against, against so, so suppose gravity there is a gravity. So, initially saturated, then after that what happened due to gravity. So, the gravitational water is going to uh, going to escape from the uh, specimen. So, in that case the volume of water which is retained inside against uh, the ratio of water which is retained divided by the total volume that will give the the uh, specific retention. Okay. The specific retention is how effectively a particular aquifer retains water against gravity. Okay. So, that is a uh, specific retention. You might have seen the similar term field capacity. So, that is similar to this, this is a similar to field capacity. Okay. And then, uh, so that is the volume of water retained and total volume. So, this is the uh, uh, specific retention. And then uh, uh, the total pores, so suppose if you have, so this is the uh, you know the sand grains, okay, the sand particles, these are the sand particles and then over that initial suppose this is completely saturated, right. If this is completely saturated, so due to gravity, so all this water which is uh, not influenced by particles will be or influenced by gravity will be flown out. So, the rest will be so this water, so this will be attached to the soil particles right and this is called water is retained in the soil particles. So, the volume of water which is retained divided by the total volume uh, of water of uh, total volume that will give the percentage of uh, uh, I mean specific retention. And and then, uh, so, uh, so since it is 
it is making up the pores. So, the total porosity which is equal to the the S R right S R plus the uh, S R this uh, water which is uh, and S G let us say or S G or S Y ok S G this is a gravity due to gravity it is gone. So, S R plus S G. So, this uh, combinedly make up the soil pores. So, the pores occupied through gravity water plus field capacity ok. So, the next is specific yield. So, specific yield is the we are talking about the rest of water. So, here so this is the specimen right the part initially saturated initially saturated and due to gravity some water has gone out. So, and the rest will be you know. So, that is uh, V S is let us say V S is staying and V G came out or let us say V R this is V R which is retained and V G came out. So, V R by V will be equal to S R whereas, V G by V which is equal to S Y ok. So, the volume of so this is called specific yield. So, the specific yield is either ratio of the volume of water. So, that will yield by gravity to its own volume ok that will yield by gravity to its own volume. So, that is specific yield. So, V G volume of uh, drain by gravity and V total. So, S Y is equal to N minus S R because N is equal to S R plus S Y. So, that is previously we have seen. So, some portion of the soil water is difficult to extract uh, held by adhesive forces that is retained we have seen. So, the next is the apparent specific yield. So, all water which is uh, we are expecting to yield uh, or, or all water which is uh, expected to yield yield may not be make up back ok yield back. So, some water uh, is due to uh, trapped by water uh, air. So, due to air air entrapment the water even sometimes difficult to pass through gravity ok. So, that means definitely the the, the uh, gravity water may not be equal to 100 percent gravity water ok. So, then that is that is why there is a apparent specific yield term come into the picture. In specific apparent specific yield if you see it is defined as the ratio of the volume of water added or removed directly from the saturated aquifer to the resulting change in volume of aquifer below the water table. If you suppose there is there is a water table right. So, here initially is uh, time t equal to 0 the water table level is this and at time equal to some time so t dash. So, the water table has come down and if you see the the water which is present uh, I mean the water which is yielded out or which is came out due to this change right. So, due to this change uh, so that let us say that is V G A that the volume of water which is came out due to the, the change in the uh, uh, depth of water table divided by the volume total volume. So, this will give the apparent specific yield. So, definitely the apparent specific yield is less than the, the specific yield because of the uh, I mean because of the air entrapment ok. So, the next is specific storage. So, here the specific storage if you see. So, it is defined as the volume of water that a unit volume of aquifer releases from the storage under a unit decline of hydraulic head. So, suppose you have uh, yes, uh, you, you have you know unit saturated you know unit saturated volume. So, uh, let us say the initial water table is here ok and then the pressure at this one is here and the difference in sorry not here. So, there is a unit ok and the initial water table is here and decline to a unit hydraulic head ok. So, it declined to a unit hydraulic head and during that time the amount of water uh, the unit volume of aquifer releases from the storage. So, here is the storage. 
So, during the, the declining the unit the amount of release uh, due to the unit decline in uh, head. Okay. So, here specific storage the volume of water which is released from the storage due to the unit decline in hydraulic head. Okay. The unit decline in hydraulic head. So, this is estimated or uh, uh, assigned with S S specific storage is equal to rho nu beta uh, into 1 plus alpha by uh, n beta, okay. where alpha I mean sigma is unit weight of water and eta is porosity, beta is compressibility, compressibility of water and uh, K V D bulk modules of elasticity of water, uh, vertical compressibility of solid and yes bulk module of elasticity of aquifer skeleton. Okay. So, here this is also can be written as like this. So, here all these terms are coming to the picture because so initially the soil soil it is uh, completely saturated right the saturated. So, the moment uh, if you remove water so that that is definitely causing the head uh, declining right. So, for unit uh, decline in head unit decline in head so definitely that will influence the storage which is present in the soil specimen. So, the storage is how it is influencing because the moment you remove water. So, that means, uh, the water which is confined uh, the, the, the stratum which is confined. So, that will be definitely is going to compress right. So, when so be because when the moment it is compressed. So, this is called the compression, but definitely that will affect the expansion of the fluid. Okay, that will so, here are the two components, two things are going on. One is compression is taking place and the other one is expansion of the fluid. So, that it is going to uh, release from the, the, the storage volume. So, here the first part, the first part indicates the storage from the expansion of the water and the second part which is derived from the compressibility of the aquifer. Okay, so, compression as well as the uh, expansion of the fluid. And then the storage coefficient or the storativity, storativity or storage coefficient, it is also called volume of water released from storage per unit surface area of the aquifer per unit decline of the component of hydraulic head normal to the surface. It is similar to uh, uh, if if S S is, is the K right and S C will be T okay, transmissibility. So, the similar to the, uh, the term we have transmissivity and K. So, here we have these two terms uh, storage coefficient and, uh, uh, and, 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 and then sorry and then specific storage. Okay. So, the storage coefficient is defined as it is also called, uh, so the storage from unit surface area of the aquifer per unit decline in component of hydraulic head normal to the surface. Here the unit surface area we need to consider. So, uh, for example, in a vertical soil column, so let us say it is a vertical column, right. So, this is unconfined aquifer, let us say the water table is here, water table. So, initial water table is here and let us say the unit decline, this is the unit decline for unit decline. So, if you uh, the amount of water which is released from the system from the storage right water released from the storage. So, this is this is uh, this is called the storage coefficient. Similarly, in confined aquifer the for unit decline. So, the water which is uh, released from the system right is uh, called the uh, storage coefficient. So, and if you see the uh, both cases right. So, we will estimate the storage coefficient as S s into the B is the thickness. Okay. The specific storage aquifer material B is the thickness of aquifer. So, S s varies from 10, point, uh, 10 power minus 5 to 10 power minus 3 in case of confined aquifer, whereas in case of unconfined aquifer it is 0 0.1 to 0 0.3. So, you can clearly see the how I mean the, the magnitude differences amounts.
So, let us see an example here uh, a confined aquifer of 40 meter thickness has porosity 0.3 okay, and determine the specific storage and storage coefficients. So, other terms are alpha is given beta is given. Okay. So, use the equation. So, uh, let us see the thickness is 40 meter convert to centimeter porosity 0.3 alpha is given okay, beta is given and gamma NMA for water it is 1 gram per centimeter cube that is 989 per centimeter cube. So, this is the equation we need to use SS equal to gamma and beta plus gamma uh, sigma uh, gamma and alpha. So, put the values and you get SS is 1.62 in 10 power minus 6 per centimeter and SC the storage coefficient you multiply it with B uh, to SS you get 6.47 to 10 power minus 3. Okay. And then uh, there is another example here uh, area is given 120 hectare the basin area and water table dropped by 5 centimeter. If the porosity is 28 percent specific retention is 9 percent determine the specific yield of the aquifer change in ground water storage. So, we know that uh, you know n is equal to S r plus S y. Okay. So, the porosity is given right and then specific retention is given. So, find out S y. So, that S y is 19 percent you get okay. and then change in ground water storage. So, the area of aquifer is given drop in ground water right one ground, ground water drop and S y S y is the retention. Okay. So, uh, 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 sorry S y is the specific yield okay, specific yield. So, the change in ground water storage is 120 into 5 is the drop and you got this specific yield and finally, 114 hectare meter and this is meter cube of water can be released okay, can be released. Okay, so, there is another example here if you see the phreatic aquifer. So, phreatic aquifers are, are also called the water table aquifers. The extending over an area of 220 kilometers square has a story TVT 0.15 estimate the amount of water lost from storage if the water level falls from uh, 0.16 meter uh, during the drought. So, given the area is given uh, story TVT 0.15 the water level fall 0.16 volume of water lost is equal store activity area and drop in water level. So, is everything is given ok. So, put the values you get 5.26 in 10 power 6 meter cube is the volume of water which has been lost right from the from the area or drainage basin ok. So, there is another ok. So, this is uh, there is a 1 kilometer square uh, area. So, initial water table was at a depth of 25 meter below the ground surface. After applying an irrigation the water rose to a depth 24 meter. So, initially there is a water table right and then when you irrigate the water table uh, rose to 24 meter. So, we are this is a datum this is the datum. So, initially 25 meter and it is 24 meter because of addition of water through irrigation. Uh, this is later uh, an amount of 3 into 10 power 5 meter cube ground water was pumped and resulting the drop of uh, drop water table by 2.2 meter. So, find out the specific yield of the aquifer and the volume of uh, recharge during the irrigation. So, here initial water table is there then after that irrigated it right and water table again raise uh, rose then after that they pumped the water then water table gone down to 2.2 meter uh, from 24 meter um, uh, and they find out the specific yield of the aquifer and the volume of recharge during the irrigation. So, the volume of water uh, drained in lowering water table by 2.2 meter is equal to area into 2.2. So, that is 2.2 mm cube. Okay. So, this is the water volume of water drained right. So, as pumped you can say. 
So, specific yield is the volume of water pumped by volume of uh, uh, aquifer drained right. So, volume of water pumped that is 3 into 10 power uh, 5 right and 2.2 into 10 power 6. So, that will be equal to what a specific yield will be uh, 0.136 right and then volume of uh, uh, volume of recharge the area of aquifer into rise in water table in the specific yield. So, putting the values you get this is the um, volume of recharge. Okay, so, the other properties here are hydraulic resistance. So, hydraulic resistance, so we are looking for these uh, two properties uh, hydraulic resistance and uh, and the leakage factor. So, these two properties belong to semi confined aquifer, okay. semi confined because the resistance we have. So, uh, suppose this is the semi confined aquifer uh, upwards due to this is the leakage it could be a downward could be another leakage. Okay. So, it is the reciprocal of leakage factor or resistance against a vertical flow. Okay. So, when once you have um, the uh, like a uh, permeable surface right. So, that means water can easily pass through because this is impervious and or semi pervious. So, water pass through, but not uh, not at that ease. Okay. So, that is why it is called leakage. So, the property of semi permeable layer of semi confined aquifer that is a C is equal to B square by K B okay. where C is hydraulic resistance in days and B leakage factor in meter and hydraulic conductivity k and b is the thickness of uh, a thickness of confined aquifer okay so the hydraulic resistance is varying from 10 po 10 square to 10 power 6 uh, minutes so hydraulic resistance is uh, measured in minutes okay time units okay so similarly in the same equation if you use so you can take B out. So, that is the square root of K B C that is a leakage factor. So, it determines the distribution of leakage into or from the semi previous layer. So, high value of uh, a B indicates the, the resist greater resistance. So, because uh, uh, high value indicates the greater resistance of semi previous strata. So, the K is hydraulic conductivity B is thickness of uh, confined aquifer and hydraulic resistance is a C. So, I think uh, uh, there is other uh, properties is called isotropy and uh, homogeneity. So, isotropy uh, definitely its aquifer properties if the aquifer properties whatever the properties we have discussed all the properties or if the properties are or any of the property are independent of uh, the direction that is called isotropic. So, the, if the k is uh, same with all directions it is called the k is isotropic. Okay. If all properties of aquifer are constant or independent of the location it is called homogeneous. So, the properties are homogeneous when the particular property does not change with the uh, direction okay. with the direction oh, sorry with the uh, constant with the location the location. So, the location indicates homogeneity, direction indicates isotropy. So, homogeneous depends on the location, isotropic depends on the, the time okay. and anisotropic or heterogeneity is opposite to the previous uh, property. If the properties are dependent on the direction, it is not dependent on direction, it is isotropic. If all properties are equivalent dependent on location, it is called heterogeneity. Okay. So, mostly we considered for uh, hydraulic conductivity uh, because it uh, because the soil formations vary in the I mean the properties of soil formation vary in the location mostly since we are dealing with the flow the k is the most influential parameter uh, in, 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 in ground water flow. So, we consider this isotropic homogeneity and isotropic and uh, or non homogeneity or heterogeneity uh, for 
uh, for k hydraulic conductivity. Okay. okay, so with this, the aquifer properties, the mostly uh, uh, like uh, porosity, you know, bulk density, porosity, uh, specific yield, apparent specific yield, specific retention, right? Uh, storage coefficient, specific storage, right? And uh, and and then uh, uh, the properties of leakage aquifer, uh, uh, properties of semi-confined aquifers like uh, leakage factor and hydraulic resistance, and then uh, the condition of aquifer, uh, the flow system is concerned. Like uh, if the properties are you know same with the direction, it's not changing with the direction, it's called isotropy if the changing with the location it is called homogeneity uh, uh, and the quite opposite to that it is called anisotropic and uh, uh, heterogeneous. Okay. So, with this and also we, we saw uh, solved some of the examples. Um, I think with, with this the properties of aquifers uh, have been completed. So, we will be uh, studying more on uh, well hydraulics in the next uh, uh, next few lectures and then the tutorial for solving few examples on uh, the well hydraulics. Okay. So, thank you.